don't want to give me a star, man. I, I'm sitting. All right, here we go with this. Here we going with this. Remember the classics, man. I'm going back. It was released May 4th, 1984, with a budget with $1.2 million. The movie wound up making $38.7 million. God, you talking about a profit. I'm talking about the one and only, the classic. Breaking. Breaking? Classic. Classic. Now, y'all probably like, why you like that movie? Acting was terrible. Exactly. So what? You know, you know, Sex Shakespeare, motherfucker? That's all you getting at. If y'all didn't see the movie, I'm about to tell you. The movie's about a young jazz dancer named Kelly. Met two break dancers named Ozone and Turbo. And that was it. <laughs> that was it. They met dude, their friend James. And James like, let me see you my friends. And you met the friends. And then you see James like two more times. And James is gone. You ain't see James no more. Even in part two, James ain't come back. He was just a setup guy, for real. But Kelly was a white girl, and those two guys were black. And my uncle always had a problem with that. Wait, could have got a black girl to do that. That's not, they're trying to make some money. They're trying to make some money. Back then, you had to get the crossover loop. So they're like, you know what? No, we're going to throw this white girl, and this is going to be this, and the fish out of the water. It's going to work. But the, one, of the amazing, one of the most amazing things about the movie, the guy who ran the movie company, I think Canon Films, Orion, whatever it was, this guy, they had a documentary on him, I watched it. He said he went to his kids and asked, what's the new thing you guys are doing now? He's a foreign cat, it was just the new thing you guys are doing. And one of his kids like, break dancing, yeah! He started dancing and slowly, break dancing, I like that. We're gonna do a movie about break dancing. And then one of the guys like, ho, ho, man, wait, oh. They doing one already called B Street, it come out in June. B Street comes out in June, we're coming out in May. We're doing a movie about break dancing. I'm like, oh shit, this dude ain't no bullshit. And he said, in the middle of the movie, we're going to do a part two. It's going to be called Electric Boogaloo. Break it through. Break it through. Like, what the fuck is this? Who is this bad dude? He had, he had movies like, uh, uh, what's he called that? Charles Bronson movies. Um, Death Wish movies. Charles Bronson did. Uh, Chuck Norris movies. He had all those. Uh, Mission in Action movies. He had all those movies. So dude was like, just dropping films. He didn't care. But this one, I think this is his most profitable franchise. The breaking franchise. He were at the movie theaters, dog. We were at the movie theaters. And I remember going, and my favorite scene came on as soon as I walked in. I did not know that was going to be <laughs> the best scene in the movie. But it was, and to this day, I can watch that shit. It was when my man, Boogaloo Shrimp, grabbed the broom outside, man. And he was getting it in with the song Tour de France. Ah, 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 oh, come on, man. You don't want to give me a start, man. I, I'm sitting down. You don't want me to start, dog. I remember seeing that movie. And I came out, I left that theater. I knew how to moonwalk that day. And they were they were uh, breakdancing down the street in my homeboy's garage. And I just jumped in there and I started going around. And, oh, oh, oh. Then I started doing this. Oh, we gonna call you popcorn. They called me popcorn. All because of breaking. You know what I'm saying? I felt like somebody because of breaking. Movie was great. I enjoyed it. It came out on video real quick, probably like within three months. It came out on video. We had our Betamax. They got they got the copy of it. We watched it. I watched it every day. Movie's iconic. It um, definitely changed the game. Soundtrack was amazing. I played it the other day. That's what made me want to. I played the soundtrack. <laughs> Ain't no stopping us. No stopping people. They come from miles around to get them. And then you had John Claude Van Damme in it. I was like, John Claude Van Damme. Van Damme. Was in breaking. They had 99 and a half with, man, that shit, then. They didn't have a song Tour the Friends on it. I was pissed at that. I thought that should have been on there. <sighs> Overall, man, movies, le movies legendary. Might not have been the greatest actor in the movie, because you had my man Shabba Doo talk, you don't know how I feel and why I do what I do. You know what I mean? Then he went and told her the kid break dancing that was handicapped and said, look at his face. And I'm like, how she gonna look at his face? He doing the goddamn, uh, he doing the fucking windmill on the ground. He can't even sit still. How you gonna look at his face? I always had that question in my head when I saw the movie. Well, overall, class film. Lucinda Dickey, Kelly, you had uh, Shabadoo as Ozone and my man, Michael Chambers, Boogaloo Shrimp as Turbo, man. And they are definitely legendary forever for that. I forever. And they did part two. And I might not do remember the classes on part two because I, eh, eh, you know, they ain't even like it. You know what I'm saying? They, they ain't even like it. They did the Zoom thing. Shabba dude was like, yeah, when we did the scene in the hospital when they were, the doctors were dancing, he like, this is corny as hell. 
<laughs> but hey, man, actually, he died a little after that. So, man, rest in peace to Shabadoo. I think Shabadoo is supposed to be kind of related to my family somehow. But he's from Chicago, so we will probably do a grown-up shop episode on him. And, and rest in peace to Poppin' Taco. Poppin' Taco? Poppin' Taco did the move, and he had it and did like that, and then he came up, and then he did his jacket. Break. Classic.